All right, guys, in this video, I want to talk about now I have DIY vapor blaster plans for a closed loop version. And up until this point, I haven't talked about open loop or closed loop. So I also want to discuss what the differences are in this video. All right, guys, so here's the closed loop version. I added a two hour DIY video to add the closed loop feature to the vapor blaster. So my plans are in the upper right, they can be purchased. It is totaling five and a half hours total for all the information, open loop, closed loop, um, and plus you get nine PDF documents. There's electrical schematics, parts lists with links, and all sorts of other information. Okay, so here's a spreadsheet. You got all the links. You just click on the links and buy the products online. Got a color schematic for the electrical, pneumatic diagram, and so forth. It's all the information you need to build this guy. Okay, so let me back up for a second and talk about open loop versus closed loop. First of all, I started off with open loop and I thought that would be just fine. The issue is my house is located 30 or 40 feet that way. This is my detached garage. So I would have to drag the garden hose out here and hook it up right here to supply water to the fresh rinse on the window and also the rinse nozzle inside to rinse off parts. No issues there, but I got lazy and I didn't feel like dragging the garden hose out here. So sometimes I ran this without water hookup and it did just fine, but the wiper would run dry and it wouldn't clean the window as well. And then I couldn't rinse parts. I had a bucket nearby, but again, that wasn't ideal. Then winter came. The garden hose froze up and it's freezing outside. It was negative 25 here a couple weeks ago. And just dragging a hose out here, you know, it kind of sucked, okay? And a lot of you guys have been asking for a closed loop version, so I'm like, you know what, let's just build it, okay? So for open loop, you hook water up, water is added to the system, and the water rises in the pit, okay? Now, after a certain amount of time, this pit is gonna get too full, it's gonna dilute your slurry mix, so you just have to drain off the water for open loop, or for any version. That water you just dispose of, okay? Now with closed loop, you take that water, you drain it off into those filter boxes, it skims out the media, and then you supply relatively clean water to a pump that pumps it when you need it. And the loop continues. So this is a completely self-contained unit no water hookup you may have to add water as it evaporates but it is fully self-contained this thing is also fully automated and i i really love it i i love not having to freaking drag the hose out here okay so let me describe how this thing works there are pretty much two buttons or two interactions with this machine button down here powers it up turns the lights on and it also turns on the on-demand pump and it's ready to go if you want to rinse. So here I got the rinse. So that is on-demand ready to go. Okay so now at this point you can load up your part and just start blasting. I got a foot pedal and also I got a ball valve here so I can do hands-free uh, motion. Now notice, right when you start blasting, the wiper motor starts working and so does the window rinse to clean the window. So that's all automatic. Now when you lift your foot off or close the air, that shuts off. Now obviously we're adding water to the system and the water is going to rise. I have an alarm on there that's an audible alarm. If this pit gets too high of water, it can hold four to five gallons more than its normal level, an alarm goes off and it says, whoa, dude, you got to stop blasting. You got to purge some of that water out. Okay. Now you don't want to open the overflow valve immediately after you stop blasting because the media is in suspense. It's a slurry, right? So you got to wait a minute or two. The, the, the media will drop and then you can open the valve and you can do whatever you want with the water. 
Now I took it a step further and I got an air operated valve on the overflow and it's hooked up to a timer delay and it goes off after a pre-programmed amount of time. So I currently have it set up for two minutes. After you stop blasting, two minutes will count and then the valve will open and it'll dump the water out automatically. The filter boxes do what they gotta do to drop any further media out of the water and then that big bin over there has water that is supplied to a pump over here to automatically feed the system back again. Okay, so let me talk about what I have in this machine. The cabinet, it's $200 brand new. I got $1,300 in parts for the open loop version and then it cost about 300 bucks to add the closed loop feature. So that's 1,300, 1,500, and I'm sitting at about 1,800 bucks for all this, okay? And you can further reduce the cost by not using brass everywhere, okay? I got a bare bones cost list as well. It really reduces the cost if you just get rid of all this brass and use plastic, okay? And I actually have a mixture of plastic and uh, brass at the moment, and you know, it works just fine. Okay, so the cheapest closed loop machine out on the market has to cost at least five grand, okay? I don't know what the actual cost is, but you know, there's models out there that cost about four grand for the base. If you add the closed loop and all this automation stuff, then obviously it's gotta be five, six grand. I don't know, but they are very expensive. Okay, to summarize what parts have to be added from open loop to closed loop, I had to add another control box because I ran out of room in this one. There's a pump, there's a solenoid, there's a pressure regulator, there's an air operated valve, some bins, plumbing and electrical. It's really not that much, it's about 50 parts. So in the open loop, there's 100 parts, and in the closed loop, there's 50 parts. So I got about 150 parts in this machine, and the spreadsheet shows you exactly which ones to buy. Okay, so I wanna do a little demo of how this works. Right now, the timer has met its two minutes, and the valve, this air-operated valve, is open. Okay, so it has puked out all the water. But let me go ahead and just hit the rinse. And what's gonna happen is the water is gonna run down into the pit and then right out the overflow. So you can see it's starting to drain off some of that water. Okay, now as soon as you start blasting, it cancels the output of the timer and it closes that valve. So you see it closed. Okay, now, since you let off blasting, the timer goes back into counting. So after two minutes, that thing's gonna open again. And if any water has been added to the system, it will simply open back up. So what I'll do is I'll add more water. I'll just continue to pump. And I'll fast forward the video because I'm sure you don't wanna wait for two minutes, so. Okay, so you just heard the air go off. That was after two minutes. And now that valve is open and it's puking out relatively clean water. And then these filter boxes filter out even more media and stuff like that and provide clean water back to the pump. So there's your closed loop system.